While my first candle is setting and cooling down, I'm going to show you the other molds that you can use. So these are plastic ones and I've got one that is a shell mold and it comes apart. And then I've got two cylinder molds and they just twist apart at the bottom and you twist them back on. And it's a little bit different because with these ones you add the wick in while the wax is cooling. Unlike this one that's got the metal skewer, these ones actually have a hole uh, through the center where you can add your wick into place before um, you pour your wax on just like that. Um, so I'm going to be using these two molds today and this one is slightly different too because it does come apart um, and that's just because of the shape of the shell. So what I want to do first is just to poke my wick up and this is just some wick cord. Um, you can buy this in rolls or if you don't have just the cord because you don't need to have your um, traditional candle base wick um, but if you don't have those you can always just cut it off and use just the cord and I'm going to push it up through the top like that and then once again you're going to need some glue tack just so that way uh, the wax doesn't leak out through the hole. And then that is just going to hold it into place like that and then you're going to have that upright. Now with this one it's a little bit different. You want to place you're going to place this down the center and there is a little groove where your wick can go through and then you're going to clip it on like that and you just want to make sure that that's nice and flush and then you're going to get some elastic bands and this is just going to hold everything into place so that way this doesn't just open up when you pour the wax into it and you want to make sure that the elastic bands are on this really tight. And you want to do the same where you add the glue tack in down at the hole in the base. And then that's how it's going to stand up like that. So those are the two that I'm going to be doing. I might also add a little bit of glue tack in on just either side just so this one holds up a bit nicer because it looks a bit top heavy and it's going to fall over. So I'll just do that so that way it's not going to just fall over when I place my wax into it. So that's what's different about these two and I'm also going to show you in this part how to um, add your colour into your pillar candles. I've gotten my second lot of wax up to the correct temperature so now it's time to add in my fragrance plus my dye chips. So I'm going to be just using the pink and you can get this off my Amazon store. These are really great because you can just shave a little bit in and get a really light colour or add more in and get a stronger colour. Chop off a little bit or you can use a grater. And then just add that into your wax. And this will give us a soft pink color. And then I'm going to measure out for these two about 26 mils of my fragrance oil. And then I'm going to add that in as well. And mix that all up. And you can already see, because I've gotten this to the correct temperature, that the dye has already started to melt into my wax. It's really hard to tell what kind of color uh, your candle will turn out when it's still in its liquid form because obviously this is clear but when it starts to set it's going to start to crystallize and go white. So a really helpful way is you can just put a little bit onto something white and then let it set. 
So because my bench is white, it will show me what color it is when that starts to dry and whether I need to make this a little bit stronger. So to me that's looking a little bit light, so I'm going to chop up some more dye chips and add it in. And mix that up again. And you can see here our first candle has already started to do that really beautiful crystallization that you get from your palm wax. And this palm wax has been certified, so that is something important to look for when you are looking for your wax, um, that it is coming from the correct places, especially when you're working with a palm substance. But we're getting those beautiful crystallizations there, and that's because we got it to the correct temperature. If you don't get it to the correct temperature, you're not going to get that beautiful crystallization on your pillar candles. So this color's looking a little bit stronger now that that extra bit of the dye has melted in. Um, but before I pour it, I'm just going to test it again, make sure that I'm happy with it. Just a few drips. I just want a really soft light pink. Okay, so now we are ready to pour. And we've gotten that beautiful dome right there. And I'm just going to make sure that when it comes time, I'm going to push this wick back into its right place. Oh, that's leaking. Okay guys, so take two. So the first one did start to leak and I realized that I put the rubber bands on the wrong way and that's why there are those indentations. <laughs> um, so this looks like it is nice and tight, hopefully, and we'll pour some wax in. right up to the top just like that and I just used a spare wick to just push this one back into place so it's in the center um, but that looks nice and tight now it's not leaking this time something to also consider when you are making pillar candles is the temperature of the room I think that's why I like candles so much because there's so much that is the same as resin so the temperature of your room really matters with the crystallization of these candles and also how they set. Uh, you want probably quite a nice room temperature, so 24, 25, and you don't want that temperature to suddenly change. So don't put your air con on or a heater on, um, depending on where you are in the world, because a sudden drop in temperature, a sudden rise in temperature can affect the way that these set, because they need to set in a really slow, um, even temperatured room so around 24 25 is a great temperature to have these set and that way you'll get that perfect crystallization now these I'm just gonna let set overnight before I demold them just so that way they are fully set within um, in the center as well uh, you can set undo you can Demold them before that, but you just need to make sure that they are fully set in the center. You don't want to accidentally damage them. So I generally just wait till the next day.
For this one, we just need to demold it. So you want to get something soft and turn it upside down and just press in. And then you might need to give it a bit of a tap, but because it has contracted, it's sliding out. And now what was in your bottom is now the top of your beautiful candle. And look at that stunning finish. We've got that really beautiful crystallization pattern that you get with this wax. And you only get this pattern when you have gotten it to the correct temperature. So all I need to do now for the very last step is just to add in my cotton wick. Just up through the center like that and pushing it in nice and tight and the wax will just hold it into place. And you've got your perfect candle there. All I need to do now is just trim off probably about a centimeter maybe a little bit more of my wick just like that and then we've got our pillar candles that are all finished let me know your thoughts below to this beginner's guide of pillar candle making you can just leave it in the comment box i'll also list everything that i use today down in my description box as well if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as that really does help me out. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that way you get notified every single time I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching.